For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We've started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's podcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode number four, Accountant with a Gun. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> that was my first idea, and that was inspired by Jay because that's it, we were discussing it, and that's Morgan, accountant with a gun. Yes, sure. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't put that in a general ledger? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get a second mistake. All right. <laughs> we'll cut that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you guys want to keep that? Exactly like that. We will see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My name is Tanzin, and I am joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Hey. Today we have a guest speaker to help us discuss chapters seven and eight. Would you introduce yourself, Jay? Well, since you already introduced me as Jay, sure. Not a problem. Hi. <laughs> I happen to be uh, one of the ladies' roommates. And uh, recently got roped into starting uh, the Jim Butcher experience, I guess you'd want to call it. Um, reading the, the first novel and uh, one of the graphic uh, comic books. So. What was your first impression of Stormfront? Uh, the book or the graphic novel? Which one? Either or. Yeah, either. Uh, well, the graphic novel, obviously, it's easier for me to read because, uh, you know, pictures. But um, <laughs> the novel itself, um, again, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I do read quite a bit of fantasy fiction, um, more along the lines of Sword and Sorcery uh, with Glenn Cook. But this was kind of an interesting thing, having a magical person in a modern setting. So it was, it was intriguing anyway. Do you have any any questions to, to start before we just start? discussing well, some of the chapters. Well, how start discussing the chapters? Because my questions will lead into a lot of what you're about to discuss. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so not okay. too much from the first couple chapters. You want to go over anything that's all kind of... It'll, it'll probably tie it'll all back in together. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. Good enough. Morgan the Warden catches Harry summoning Toot Toot, and we learn of the Doom of Damocles. Morgan accuses Harry of killing Jennifer Stanton and Tommy Tom. This accelerates the timeline for Harry to find the killers because now the White Council officially suspects him of committing the murders. Harry Blackstone Copperfield Dresden. Irresponsible use of true names for summoning and binding others to your will violates the fourth law of magic, the man intoned. I remind you that you are under the doom of Damocles. No further violations of the laws will be tolerated. The sentence for further violation is death by the sword to be carried out at once. Enter Morgan. <laughs> so, the Doom of Damocles, do we all know what that is? No. No? <laughs> well, allow me. <laughs> so, in it, as least spoiler territory as possible about how he received them. I don't think. Well, it, I mean, we basically, yeah, chapter. we get in this chapter. Oh, so, as long as yeah. you've read this oh. chapter. I forgot about that. Yeah, one. even though yeah. we haven't got quite so to. We're not actually spoiling that. Ignore me then. We're not, as long as they are up to date on today's chapters. So, um, Damocles is a character. So, this is the, just the Wikipedia version, mm -hmm. real quick. So, um, it's a character who appeared in um, a likely apocryphal anecdotal co anecdote commonly referred to as the Sword of Damocles, an allusion to the imminent and ever present peril faced by those in positions of power. So basically, he was like a courtier and was all like, oh, my king, I love you. You're wonderful. You're fabulous. And nothing could be better. And he's like, yeah, you want to try this shit for a while? And Damocles is like, yeah, okay, sure, cool. So king sets him up as the king for a day, but basically um, demands that a sword be hung above the throne, supported by nothing more than like a single horse hair. So it was kind of to represent the, like, you got fame and fortune and stuff going for you. But you screw you're, up just you're, once you're like dead. anything. Well, you have to be aware because it's not even necessarily a screw up like this thing. So basically, like 
the the king had, of course, in his rise to power, not always been completely just or fair, and so had made enemies, and so yeah, along with that burden, like in order to keep his throne, it was always like yeah, so it's kind of. Um, the looming, any moment. The looming yeah. threat. Of, yeah, yeah. Basically, like, yeah, Shoe fame and fortune is not all it's, it's cracked up to be. Yeah, so you never know. You always have to be on the lookout, on the guard. And how did they they put it here? Because um, it totally reminded me of, like, a, a, a Spider-Man line. He's like, Danicles finally begged the king that he be allowed to depart because he no longer wanted to be so fortunate, realizing that with great fortune and power comes also great danger. Which isn't quite the same as great power and responsibility, but... It flows the same. <laughs> so, yeah, Harry Harry has this thing constantly hanging over his head that could bite him in the ass at any time, and apparently it has come to pass. Right. So this is where we're also, I think, introduced to the laws of magic. I'm not sure if Harry has mentioned it. Yes, he did. He mentioned it in the hotel suite. Right. They broke the first law in here. We talk about they, they it a little bit more. They talk about the fourth law in this one. Yeah, but uh, he also mentions... The first law is not killing somebody with magic. So. Yeah, that's the one that, that he's the most law. under scrutiny so for that's because why of his experience with the his former mentor. Damocles, yeah. So Morgan's here trying to nail him on the fourth law for... So yeah, like I think Morgan's just around trying to nail him to the wall. It doesn't make any difference what he does. It could be a parking ticket as long as it's like mm-hmm. against what the what the code is and Pretty just take him out. Pretty much that is, yeah. yeah. Morgan is very, very by the book, to very determined. So yeah, so um Well let's talk a little bit about the role that, that Morgan plays in the terms of the books itself. Like I, I from how I kind of see Morgan is that this establishes very concrete rules in the universe that Dresden lives in. So mm-hmm. he can't just go around willy-nilly doing doing uh, magic like they would in Harry Potter. I think we mentioned that. I mean, there was a government episodes. and rules in Harry Potter. They were just horribly, horribly <laughs> organized. <laughs> it was too much <laughs> like real life. But, no. in, but in this case, there are actual rules that he has he has to well it is in consequences more because in potter you really only seem to come up against the three unforgivable curses and beyond that i don't underage think... magic and okay underage magic but that's i think that was more of a uh what do you want to call it a restraining yeah like a learner's thing. permit with yeah. driving yeah, kind it, of a thing yeah, it's not kind of thing yeah i mean the Although punishment would have been to lose his wand Right. Well, that's true. And okay. Where, as opposed whereas to his in this life. one, his life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, sure. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there were. But I was going to say, I, I imagine I, Harry I, Potter I, did imagine losing his magic wand as as equivalent. <laughs> yeah, that would to him that would have been having come. But from anyways, him. yes. Okay. So but anyways, Morgan but, but the sort of the of three the law biggies. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we had ores and stuff in in Potter, and here we've got um, there's seven the main well, actually, laws. We, so far as I've seen, there's there's nothing like an aura in uh, Dresden Files. Basically, this guy is his keeper. It's you know it's one guy that screwed up once, and now you have somebody hounding him around, waiting for that one moment so we can take him out. Yeah, so this is like a okay. parole officer. He Morgan is a warden of the White Council, and exactly, he's just. He has a personal vendetta against Dresden in and of itself. So yeah. So okay. Means- well, here let's. Okay. Time out a second. So just to make sure who knows what we're on, because we're going off about this. Okay. So um, in this, this is the chapter where he explains once he says that Morgan shows up that this is where we find out that Harry killed somebody. So he killed his former mentor, who was trying to seduce him, and then what Morgan pops up for here from the end of the last chapter to this is is the binding. It was binding someone to your will, right? So he's mentioned the first and the fourth. So um, this is, yeah, so Morgan, so so Harry was tried at 16 or whatever for the first one, but because it was supposedly self-defense and that, right, he got off on the technicality. And Morgan's one of the ones that thinks, like, it doesn't matter. You kill, you kill. There's 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 no self-defense. There's no if ands, or buts. There's no mitigating circumstances, right? So, of course... You know, Harry is quite relieved that, you know, but yeah, so this is why. So, and I think what you're saying there about you don't really see the ores the same way. And I don't know if I'm getting ahead. I don't know if that's not well explained. But I mean, like I get what you're saying about Morgan is is his keeper. Sort of Morgan is assigned to you. But I didn't get the sense that Harry was Morgan's only responsibility. No, I didn't get that either. No, but, uh, that's but not covered. But when you're saying that right now about the, the the first and the fourth law about technicalities, 
because as I read it uh, with his binding toot, uh, basically it's another technicality. Uh, toot being a magical creature, it's uh, no binding against a free willed creature or non magical. Basically, yeah. So you can't you can't enslave anything that doesn't have the magical ability itself, which is kind of curious in itself because now so that you can you have a, well, ex- you have a, a double standard now. If you're a magical creature or a you know, you all of a sudden don't have rights. So, or do you? So, to an extent, the White Council is uh, very much like magically racist. They are there to keep order between the humans and the magical world, uh, and that means drawing a line between everyday human and any sort of other supernatural creature, regardless of what that is. The White Council is there to sort of impose we're team human, get the fuck away from these people who aren't able to defend themselves, which is part of where the law fa- falls is that. A, a fairy, no matter how little and insignificant it is, has more ability to resist than Defend itself. the uh, average human being does. Yes, but one of my point was being is that it, to get up uh, Morgan's nose and really irritate him, he's using these technicalities. Oh, yes. And so basically uh, Morgan's out there to try to do a hard line, this is what it means, don't cross it. And he's going, they're going well, no. It, this is a magical creature, not somebody that can't defend himself. Yeah. So here's the technicality. I sorry, think. Sorry, puts a bug in your ass, but you know. Yeah, they do fundamentally disagree this. on the yeah. interpretation of the laws and what that means. And, for and them I both. guess for me, it's it's not entirely the magical creature portion of it. It was more that Harry was like, I gave him a choice. Like I didn't technically, like he he didn't have to take my deal. I I would have let him go. I wasn't forcing him against his will to do anything. It was just. That was the leverage I was using. Like, I really want this information. I so made the you deal really, enticing. you really should agree to help me out here, right? But he's like, you know, I still could have been like, all right, fine. And um, so it, it is to a large point. You're right. They are there to defend the the defenseless and the humans that know nothing about it and have no magical ability. But I don't know if it's entirely just your ma- like i mean there is yeah i mean obviously more magical creatures are more able to defend themselves but i think that i think the technicality in this case wasn't so much that that it was a human versus a fairy as simply as harry was like i mean yeah he was like he was just a dew drop fairy he's not really anybody and i gave him the choice like he didn't have to take the deal right yeah but so, again we're back to morgan being it's like, I it don't is care. It's, this is what it says it's, I'm uh, looking yeah for a reason to kill it which makes it kind of like well who the hell is this i mean this like i said this is like an accountant with a gun well he really is the white council's enforcer as, as dresden describes him intellectually doesn't have that capacity to question the white council so he really just is their watchdog yeah. He's very talented magically, but just doesn't have the smarts to be able to question anything else beyond the rules that he is given. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, he's very, very much towing that line. He does not like to see in shades of gray at all. Yeah. He's just, you know, it's like... Very cut and dried. Very, very cut and dried. And Harry, as we've come to see in these first few chapters, really isn't. <laughs> So I think that's, yeah, it's just like their straight up personalities don't blend together well. And exactly the fact that Harry's kind of, skinner it's just everything, right? It's like, well, you did this horrible thing. And so they were like, oh, he's just a kid and they never knew better and it was self-defense. So he let you off, right? But he's like, but not only that, but you went ahead to like openly practice and stuff like that, which is not a thing that we do. You know, and just like everything, right? Like Harry's just like yeah, given every his opportunity. Nose at them, at, at yeah, for for you know. So they're like, dude, we let you live, and you're no, being more shut up pay- and sit down, <laughs> right? Like that's kind of that what be, I think that might be the thing. It's just uh, the White Council might actually be afraid of him because he's not towing their line. He's not part of the in club, and he's actually saying that yes, magic exists, and I am here. I'm Hello, in the book. So if it, it, something yeah. doesn't work out, yeah, uh, come visit me. Yeah, you got you got a fairy stealing your baby. Yeah, yeah, come talk to me. That's a thing. And they're like, what the fuck? We don't know. Yeah. And that's exactly it. Harry's a black sheep that they can't control, and so that inherently goes against their entire council. Is, yeah. is that even he's a black sheep? I mean, black sheep would be a black mage. Would be his mentor. Well, what that's no, what that's what Harry's been accused of. Well, about. that is yeah. Yeah. That's what so half the council. Like a, he's like so. a, he's even he's not so. even a diamet uh, was a diametric opposition. Diametrically so he's not opposed. O- he's not opposite of them. He's actually with them, but he has kind of a shade of gray that they don't like because they can't control him because he just doesn't believe in their 
their way of doing it. Yeah, exactly. he's 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 like the redheaded cousin or whatever. Fine, like he's part of the family. He's not the black sheep, <laughs> but they don't want to acknowledge him. They don't want to respect him. I'm sorry, yes, oh, no, no, no. I just want I was wanting to ask the question: Why do you think the reason is that Dresden is so driven to sort of be an out wizard as opposed well, to the? To the I don't want to toss out any spoilers in here. In the closet. But he did watch Dukes of Hazard at a very formative age. <laughs> <laughs> to a point, as has been briefly touched on and will come up throughout the series, he does hold a grudge against his trial, ultimately. I mean, he was found not guilty, but he was placed under the Doom of Damocles and he was given a warning. This and he was basically told to live in fear. Uh, as we'll learn later on, yeah. there was other extents of his like you punishment that he wrong, had to... We could Exactly, and yeah. as as will later be revealed throughout the series, there's other aspects of his punishment that were also doled out, and also other mean, levels yeah. of scrutiny that he was going through. So he has a bit of an issue with this because he's like, "All I did was stop myself from being killed, and now I'm converted live. into black magic." Yeah, which is what exactly he was like, attempting to stop doing. And the word for uh, dark mages in the series is considered to be warlock. So Harry is basically. You know, like, for them, like, this man was, like, towing the edge of tipping into Warlock, and they ultimately decided at the end of the day that he could be saved from uh, uh, going, going down full path. down that path. However, again, some of the council just don't believe that he is redeemable, and so Harry lives with a lot of resentment due to Wonderful. even just being a 16-year-old boy and the scares that he went through in that situation on top of the punishment, on top of, I mean... Harry, we've decided, is about 25. He's been living under yeah. this for almost a decade now. He's got some bitterness and resentment to a system that he doesn't believe in. Yeah. Which explains a little bit why he calls them a bunch of crotchety old men who are only in, interested in their own experiments. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, true, but I also think uh, when you're going with that one, um, th that he didn't mind the idea of being paroled, and he acknowledged that he was wrong and using magic to kill somebody, but acknowledging the circumstance that that was the only way he could live. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what is it? He's, yeah, he's on parole, and the only way to get out of parole is to die. Pretty, yeah. Because I mean, they, they weren't offering him exoneration. What they were offering him was just life under under, under fear, the under doom fear. for. And that may be why he's doing what he's doing because he's tired of watching people be bullied all the time. And the magic users can bully somebody without actually physically doing anything them. to them. Yeah. Which is another point that I actually wanted to bring up to discuss is. His aversion to bullies, like what we, we see him, I, I, I kind of wondered a little bit about the reason why he had actually full on punched Morgan is really just because of his loathing for bullies and some of some of where that where that came from. And that's again towing the line. Harry will, you know, take every inch he can possibly get. So the second that it wasn't official business, fuck this guy, I'm taking my hit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of a neat exchange in that. It was basically it's piss off. Exchange. I'm not putting, dealing with your shit. And then Morgan punching him back. Going, that, like, yeah, because yeah, we're all like, You don't yeah, have to take right, my shit, yeah. but don't expect me to take any of yours. Yeah, either. exactly, so right. Like, You're oh. all like, Harry does it. And all the little people everywhere are like, yeah, that's I wish we could. And then, yeah, Harry doesn't get off that easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you kind of have to go. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. shitty, but that's totally fair. Well, like, yeah, mm -hmm. Morgan would. And we're setting that um, precedence of that him getting his give ass it and handed take it. to him all the time. <laughs> that too. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, sorry, I wasn't quite done touching on the um, um, Harry's parole and stuff like well, that. Well, we were. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but but the, um, oh, God, totally. When he was 16. So, yeah, so part of this was exactly his, his oh, he wasn't told, that's what I was going to say, is is Justin mm -hmm. DeMorne never told Harry about the White his Council. His old mentor, whom he's accused his of killing. His old mentor never told Harry about the White Council, never taught him the laws of magic, because his whole intent with Harry... Isolate. Isolate and, and make him into one of his little minions. He wanted to, to use him for black. He wanted to, this, this disciple, this scion, this... Um, legacy, whatever. I think that it's a double failure on the White Council's part because you know if you knew that this individual had been isolated and taught by a warlock, would you not try to redeem him by teaching him properly, assigning him a, another mentor? So like, okay, here are the laws. This is what you can't do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is why you shouldn't do it. Basically, they've completely fucked up, and they just put a body, uh, somebody with a bullet behind his head. Yeah. So, well, their their yeah. argument is ignorance of the law is no excuse. 
And, and as you'll find out later, well, part that's, of his that's, punishment is That's even is here in Canadian law. Okay. Well, you, even if you don't yes. know what the law is and you and you commit a crime, you are still guilty of that crime, even if you didn't know it existed. However, uh, part of our education system and stuff like that is to teach you that these laws exist. Wait. And if they have their, if they're law to themselves, they've fucked up because they have not told him when they when they, before they before they <sighs> sentenced him, they haven't told him. That, yeah, there's a set of laws. Yeah. There's a bunch of things that go on. And here's a new mentor for you so that you can learn, learn the ways we want you to learn as opposed to what that guy taught you. So, so basically, this is going to go a little bit outside of the scope of Stormfront for a moment. But ultimately speaking, one of the uh, uh, parameters of his parole... parole was that he be given a new mentor and be forced to undergo all of this sudden indoctrination into the world so that he is up to speed. Uh, however, another point that uh, Harry and the White Council clash on is that there's simply just too many magical folk out there in order to catch them all. So unfortunately, yeah, a lot of them are going to slip through the cracks. Harry's much above the point about if you guys let someone slip through the cracks, that's on you. They shouldn't be punished. And the White Council is very much on the defense of there's way too many of them for us to handle. Go fuck yourself. What are we supposed to do? Well, so to a point of trying to keep track of every child and make sure that they're aware of the rules and regulations of the magical world is just what the White Council says is out of the scope of reality. So sucks, but that's not on us. Which I can think if you're going to be a council handing down death sentences, it should be within your scope. Well, okay. that's, that's exactly Harry's I, point. I, I mean, we're, getting, <laughs> yeah. we're getting away from the book, but I mean, like this is now a, you know kind of one of those things. It's like, okay, first off, who put you in charge? Okay, like, who but the hell are you guys? Well, like a governing well, yeah. body, where does it develop yeah, eventually we, at some yeah, point? Exactly. And that turn is going to come later on in books, too, even for Harry, where you start to understand some of the different sides of the story a little better. But yeah, for now. But I mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, in this case, like, I, I get what you're you're saying. And of course, as we all sympathize with Harry, we're like, well, duh, this is how it should have been, like, not his fault. Not, not but I mean, you have to think about it. And like, you know, I mean, a serial killer raising a protege they're not going to tell them, well, there's laws that say it's wrong to murder. They're going to be like, yo, dude, this is our religion. This is our, what, like, you know what I mean? Like, so they're not, like, you, we have an education system. But, but cults still exist. Cults still exist. They're not giving you the mainstream information, right? They're brainwashing you to, and this was basically DeMorne's whole thing. Exactly. Was that you he know. purposely brainwashed Harry. So, yeah, as far as the White Council was concerned, DeMorne should have been, if they knew about DeMorne having... A, a ward, an apprentice, whatever you want to call him, they would have to assume that that yeah. Ultimately, Demorne didn't disclose that he had an apprentice, and so yeah, you know, so, so they didn't know. So yeah, so his whole point of purposely trying to to mold Harry again, Harry, crotchety old wizards being obsessed with their own experiments, they don't really give a fuck about the rest of what each I'm other sure are that's doing. Fine. And that's the exact yeah. point. If you have a crotchety bunch of old wizards that are only obsessed with themselves, then you don't go around uh, executing people that didn't fall into uh, your way of thinking because you've already screwed up. Yeah. I mean, and, if, oh, if yeah. they have this people like Morgan, Harry if they have people like Morgan, I mean, that'd be a great thing. Have Morgan organize a bunch of people to go looking for these magic children. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, this guy has potential. Hey, that one doesn't. Blah, okay. Blah, blah. But look at it in terms of this. So is the Canadian government going to rescue every child in danger out there? Do we have no homeless children? Do we have no neglected children? Do we have no abused children? Like, it's we great to... We want it, but... We, yeah, but, I mean, it's just not feasible. The Canadian government has no way to track all of those children, look after all of those children, and actually, make sure... Actually, they do. It's whether or not they're going to. Because the education system is what, what it is. Okay, I but mean, parents gone, still have I've to... I've gone through that. Um, basically, um, I got into a custody battle because of my teacher yeah. I mean when you show up and you've got scars on your face and you're bleeding uh, it's really hard to ignore that okay but just not to discount that but to take it a step further you have to go to school True. for your teacher to, like you know what I mean like there's like homeless right yeah if you you're brought up outside of the system the system can't really take care of you yeah and yes. then just to add on to I, all I of that, that. Yeah. you know but this this magical place does not have a system well, exactly. So even if every child on Earth is being accounted for, they're not being accounted for having magic. So for the, you know, like, I don't know, like, let's say, I don't know, like a solid 10 million children are born a year. I don't really know what the number is, but like, you know, any percentage of that. And again, as you'll find through the books, the way that a child ends up with magic, there's a few different routes that go through. And generally speaking, it is genetically, but it can skip generations. It can leave families. It can leave kids if they don't um, pursue it. 
Uh, and the levels of magic that people do have is also something in and of itself. So do you have just a, a scam or do you have a psychic? Uh, that sort of thing. It's, it's to an extent where even if every child is accounted for for the White Council, at least their point is that how the hell are we supposed to even start by finding those kids? Because it's not like every child on their 11th birthday is ready to go to magic school and do this, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like you may be like uh, Harry, I believe, was in and around 10 years old or so when he first started to display signs of magic um however you know other people they might be much younger or much older before they really get a grip of their talent and potentially might lose it before they ever do get that grip yeah well there's one thing that i wanted to bring up a little bit um where there's this gray area for for dresden because he straddles the the existence of magic world and a non-magic world we have uh, the white council being a an ultimate um Kind of an Say? authority in the magic world. Yes, no, sorry. The ultimate yes. authority. They were. They, they are the ultimate authority. <laughs> they don't even. They don't acknowledge the human world as, at all. Whereas Dresden, he is caught between police action. We even see with the great gray area that he even has said there was no law of magic that protected uh, me from him and his fists when when talking about his fear of Morgan. Because mm -hmm. there's that, again, that bit of a gray area between, because he is between those two worlds. It, yeah. There's no protection from him. The, him. the laws of the White Council deal a little bit more with the lofty ideals. They don't get down to the nitty gritty day to day that's left to human c civilization and there are no the bylaws. laws of the mortal world and stuff like that. Yeah. They're, it's very easy to only have seven laws when they encompass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Much. <laughs> right. So, yeah, they're not dealing with the petty. Like, you're right. If, if Morgan and Harry want to have it out, the White Council is going to be like, fuck you, you're problem. Um, right as long, as there's, long as they don't use magic to do it as long as they, yeah as long as you you know as yeah then exactly right mm -hmm. so um um it, it it it's yeah it's it's that whole it's that imperfect perfection kind of a thing right they're doing their best to try and and cover as broadly as they can while not leaving too much out of it but there's only so much you know that they can or that they're willing to to encroach on i think that's more along the part of what they're willing to do and if they're a bunch of old men you know crouchy old men yeah interested in their experiments then they don't really give a rat's ass what goes on in there until something hits well, them in the face well yeah because they've they've been sort of very secular up until this point is that the word i'm looking for like inclusive they're they're not <laughs> Closeted, <laughs> they are very closeted. Well, they can't be yeah. secular in the same the, the same way. So they're they're inclusive, but not secular. I guess would be the term because they're not open. It doesn't involve everybody in existence. It, they, Is that secular? They, so they're, they're non secular. They're, they're, well, I don't know. Okay, they're inclusive to the magic, to the people of magic, but they don't really give a rat's ass about anybody else. Well, that's what I meant, right? They're exclusive. just exclusive. Yeah, they're they're. In, include only themselves is not they're not inclusive to the world they're inclusive to yeah so and exclusive to everyone else um in that exactly that maybe that's why they're the white council <gasps> that yeah <laughs> well. so who's to bring it all back yeah. morgan shows up <laughs> um ultimately speaking uh morgan has come to accuse harry of crimes as you know the last chapter fi finished off yeah uh, and accuse him of breaking the fourth law now yeah. And um, these are the only two we've come across so far. We only know two laws. Right. So, again, Harry Harry's has his defense, as we've brought up already. There was a choice. It wasn't ultimate. Uh, yeah. Uh, he wasn't doing anything major, just looking for info, not getting two to go out and kill a guy. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and, again, as and we've also... him right away, too. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the thing, once he got the information. Yes. Was, once he got the yes, promise. He was... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, so Morgan shows up. Morgan is, you know, right on his tail. I mean, Harry's only suspect, uh, inspected the bodies uh, this morning, you know. This yeah, is this all is all the same, same day. day. So, you know, from, you know, lunchtime to whatever it is now, Harry's, you know, in the middle of the night. He's, yeah. Morgan has One worked just as fast midnight. as Harry, basically, uh, and has shown up and then ultimately has, you know, okay, fine, let's put the fourth law aside for a moment. I'm here for bigger fish and accuses Harry of having been the one to commit the crime the previous night before. Yeah. Which makes things for Harry a little bit harder now. <laughs> yeah, because it could be like, if I can nail you for this thing right here, right now, boom, all said and done. But then Harry's like, dude, you don't really have me on. And then he's like, okay, fine. <laughs> however, however, it does put a pressure of a threat of death for, for 
Harry to solve Murphy's case now because if he doesn't solve it and he gets if Mor Mor Morgan finds a way to pin it on him he's done like, and, and Harry's already said head. he's already said it's already going to be a dangerous thing for him to investigate because he's being watched and this is just a little bit further into the like yes we really are watching so, yeah so not only are we just sort of keeping an eye on you in general but we know about this specific thing and we're gonna keep a mm -hmm. very close eye on you about this so in him trying to investigate it it's a big catch-22. I've decided that we should actually have a catch-22 drinking game for all of these books. Every time yeah. Harry has a like, <laughs> catch-22, we so have drunk. to drink. Because, my God, they never go away. You need yeah. to start <laughs> developing that. That, that could be a thing. A friend of mine had a really good drinking game. It's called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly based on... Uh, Clint Eastwood thing and if you, every time it's good you drink a good drink every time you drink it's bad you drink a bad drink and every time Morgan shows up it's ugly <laughs> <laughs> that would be good too okay y'all need to start working on this yeah. this is like so, Patreon yeah, I can, I can, extras I can see and things I the recording being only about two hours long <laughs> <laughs> listen to us stumble through the books drunk off our asses <laughs> right because things went to shit yeah. chapter two well and that's Way why we're the podcast, yeah. right <laughs> exactly uh, so ultimately, yeah, Harry gets us one more, oh, fuck, one more thing hanging over my head, one more issue to be afraid of. Again, the Catch-22, you know, it was not really looking good to begin with, and it's only getting harder. Yeah, if I want to prove it wasn't me, I got to do the research on the black magic. If I do the research on the black, black magic, magic they're going to say that that's it. proof that you're trying to do, yeah. So, um, yeah, it really puts them up a great, and again, because Morgan is so rigid and so, you know what I mean? Like, but see, this is, okay, this is the one thing I sort of don't get though. Morgan's like, I think it was, you know, I know it was you. And as soon as I can prove it, you won't have time to, to work the same spell on me. And I'm like, okay, if I was Harry, I'd go home and kill you right now. I'm like, what am I going to do? Wait for you to get the proof on me and then be like, aha, I have you. Oh, shit, I better kill Morgan. I'm like, oh, why would, like, to me, it was just one yeah, of those sort of dumb things. As I was like, Warden disappears, then comes the White Council. Yeah, okay, but if you're, like, literally, you're like, I think you did this. I'm going to prove you did this. You're not going to stop me. I'd be like, I'd do the first thing I could, like, if you were actually right. True, like, he's basically come to say, I know you're the murderer, but fuck you. And the murderer, yeah, like, why would like, the I was murderer? Say, if Harry was actually the murderer. Guilty I'm, before proven innocent. I'm, yeah, but I'm pretty sure, like you say, if I was Harry, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to face the White Council, I'm just going to do your best to make Morgan hey, disappear Harry, quietly. in case you want to get in one more murder before we close in, <laughs> right. just letting you know, you've got maybe 24 hours left to do that. Right? Like, that was just, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I get that way sometimes in, like, books and movies and television, too, when I'm yeah. like, don't tell them, you, like, they always, well, like, tip <laughs> off the bad guy to stop. I'm so like, bringing in just, one... Actually, I think that's not a bad thing, though, coming from Morgan, because he said, if I can prove this, it's not kind of my gut feeling. He may be a bigot and a bias and all the rest of the stuff, but he still needs proof. Well, and yeah. He's but... actually holding off. He said, like, I'm going to okay, find Yeah, because he needs to prove to the council, right? He needs he to needs prove to the to council. Be... He's more willing to carry out the uh, the action, but you have to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And then and that's, uh, yeah, that's Morgan. I get that. That's fine. I, I mean, just, I personally think it's still just stupid to taunt the person you think is murdering every, <laughs> yeah. but like, that's my point. I was like. Actually, that's you... basically police work. Well, I know, and I'm saying station, when I watch movies and TV, all this stuff, I think it's, it's stupid when yeah. they do it too. Well, no, but it's, it's one of those ones is like, okay, if it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, you have to prove me guilty. Don't sit there and say, oh, I know you did it. I really don't give a fuck what you know. Yeah. Well, they um, even mention mm -hmm. in it that there is a there is a police there is kind of a cop robber feel to it because they do mention that he 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 is just like another cop that that he thinks Morgan he's another be, cop, yeah. whereas Morgan thinks he's another con. Yeah. So they definitely yeah, paint that so. cop robber sort of an image. And, a very, and again, and we haven't really touched on it yet, but Harry thinks very lowly of Morgan's ideals, intellect, uh, intellect. and part of that is, again, uh, as we learn, especially as the series go on, that this is very much just Harry, the unreliable narrator. He doesn't think much for Morgan. Ergo, this is a dummy who doesn't think for herself and never knows what's going on and isn't smart enough to ask his own questions. That you know, narrative will eventually be questioned as the series goes on and we get to know Morgan Weller. Weller? More. More well. Better. Better. More, more uh, but until then, it's Stay very tuned much... for the grammar extras after. <laughs> uh, it's very much uh, Harry, you know, stuck with this. Harry's Again, word, Harry's opinion. Bias Harry's, and... Yeah. Uh, so I think well, you get the impression, too, that also just instantly diminishes Morgan from the start as well. Like, this is just some dumb beat cop who wants to be in charge and wants the responsibility and power. Or, or lack of, or lack of, infl or inflexibility in 
outlook. Well, even in the way that, that they, they describe him in the book, because they he describes it as being sour, and like he has a, an uneven graying ponytail that he can't pull off that's quite like Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah. Harry's just mean, ultimately. Yeah. He doesn't like Morgan. Yeah, he doesn't like Morgan. But it, but it, but so it does... He doesn't have anything flattering to say about him. the reader... When you're yeah, 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 absolutely. Because we're just like, oh yeah, this schmuck, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, he looks like a dork, and he can't and think. Again, himself, when you're first reading the series, Harry. you very much have that impression of Morgan. As the series goes on, and you again get more of the story, uh, and I won't go there right now. But as the yeah. series progresses, you get short stories that don't come from Harry's point of view. Yeah, and that also really it's helps shape the world and step outside of Harry's, you know, bias. Bias, yeah. But that's chapter seven. <laughs> yeah, I think or a that, good portion of it. <laughs> I think the only there's a couple of foreshadowing moments that I noticed, which kind of made me happy. Um, for those of you who haven't read the entire book and are falling chapter by chapter, close your ears for a second. Um, well, I, I I found it interesting to read this 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 uh, passage, unless there was some flaw in the quasi physics that governed magic. I realized, <laughs> oh yeah, that's the storms. The whole premise of that book. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. It's not the laws. The it's it's not the laws of magic that. Um, it's the laws of physics. Basically, you're using a natural force. He, 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 he yeah, he's he's just boosting them. So yeah, so it, it wasn't because his whole point was that unless it's easy to make a heart explode, it's not easy. There's nothing easy about making the heart explode. The guy didn't have the juice for it, so he. Yeah got his so yeah so, so that's that's a little bit of a foreshadowing because he's because he actually did need to use something that affected the the physics of magic has, which well has, uh, yeah i'd agree with Tanzan because this entire book that because like this is my first time rereading stormfront since i read peace talks and battleground and there was actually several moments when a specific uh line or paragraph would stick out to me and i'm like wow like imagine that in book 17 or book 18 like the parallels yeah. are quite um, staunch yeah. at this point, you know, where it's like, you know, when you first read it in Stormfront, even as I, I, I reread the entire series before I went into Peace Talks and Battleground, it didn't really stick out to me as much until I was reading those later books. And I was like, Last wait a second, bit, like, yeah. this is a, it, it's funny, you know, the tie in, it's not the butcher hasn't tied in before. He's actually very good at it. And most of his <laughs> books are incredible, you know, weaving tales, but it was a yeah. little bit of this. Uh, you know, the scale of Toot Toot versus Castle Marcone that you just see this first and last time that are very... Yeah. Like, you know, to see where it's going, it was very much like, oh, wow. And knowing what we know now, what this will mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess. I, 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 I mean, I see where you guys are coming from. I just don't know if I... I don't know. Maybe it was just the way you, you put it or something like that. Because I'm like, there, there wasn't really a flaw in the rules of magic. It was just, he just got an extra boost for it because yeah because his Don't point worry, is like, it'll all tie into my merlin episode <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. all right so i'm not reading right. <laughs> well, save that yeah, well th- there's also some uh, rumors about chicago being a nexus for metaphysical energy anyway like part of the worldwide grid yeah like lethbridge has the uh what is it that the great ring they have there for the native ceremonies just outside of Lethbridge. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay, that's actually one of the uh, nexus points on the on the world grid. Chicago being another one. It's also on the southern end of Lake Michigan. All the weather gets funneled in there from Canada. All the ice comes down. All the wind comes down. That's why it's the yeah. Windy City. Interesting. So it's kind of an interesting city or um, uh, an idea because apparently some of the, uh, the high rises there, some of the skyscrapers and stuff, they're built out of materials that are supposed to channel energy. Mm. was one of the reasons why they built where they built and what they built. What they built, yeah. So it's kind of an interesting thing, although... That the, uses an already established... Yeah, although the, 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 uh, the Lakeside House, though, is like in another another state. It's actually two Just states barely. over. barely. Well, there's two states. There's Indiana's in between that and Michigan. So you actually have to travel 40 miles through Indiana to the Michigan side. Okay. Um, Jay which was is, kind enough to draw a map for me. Which oh. we will post on our No, don't do website. that. No, don't do that. Just use, just use well, Google Maps. No. <laughs> my, my, mine is just horrible. We'll, we'll, mark, we'll mark that. We're not going to pa- post yeah. this actual map. but We will. 
Yeah, okay. We'll throw the Google Maps version and that version on the Instagram. Yes. Right. We'll throw that version on there because there's some inaccuracy, like some serious inaccuracy. You should sign it. It might be uh, worth a whole day. Five dollars would be. Wow, yes. Yeah. So that Maybe two. Mind and you look at a map. <laughs> That's also hilarious because in my mind, I literally always imagine it reversed. I always imagine I'm coming across to Michigan. But that's okay. Apparently, Michigan is west of Illinois, not or east, east of Illinois, not west. Like yeah. I always imagine. You have to go through, there's a little piece of Indiana that yeah, goes to the lake yeah. front, and you have to go through that. Mm-hmm. Maybe he drove across the bridge on the water. That's up north. <laughs> that, no, that's really up north. That's, okay. That's, uh, <laughs> there's no bridge crossings there. Before that, we wrap up chapter seven, did you have any questions as a new reader? I think we touched on quite a few of the new questions I've actually had. Basically, it's the idea of the the White Council and stuff like that. Um, be, uh, my question is more on their authority and, like, you know, I mean, their authority into themselves. They're not elected. They're not elected. They're not selected. They just happen to be there with people that have abilities, and they think they're better than everybody else. Well, that's slightly wrong. Yeah. There. Or do we want to do we, correct do we know him? No, or do we want do to we let know him? The, do you know this? This is my first impression from this. Okay. Book. Yeah. Okay. So well, I, I won't I tell you. That. I won't I tell you. Never mind. More, I don't want to. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, you know, it yeah. reveal yeah. itself never, later never on. Never but, never but yes, you're right. We'll as, definitely as, have him back as a speaker. As so. far as we know yeah. now, Address yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that concludes our discussion of Chapter Seven. Unless you have anything else that you would like to touch upon. Okay, chapter seven, that's what he was, he was at the lake house and he started to find clues. Uh, no, that's when he was talking to Morgan. To Morgan. Just so right chapter after. seven is just Morgan. Just Morgan. Just Morgan. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so going to chapter eight is uh, a significant lack of Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I was going to say on the other side of that is, yeah, he has to leave Murphy more out of the loop because all uh, the yes. white council stuff is hush hush and he's not allowed to talk about it. So he can't explain to her. The problems with doing the research that he now has to do. To, so yeah, it's again Another just it's twenty two. It's a n- <laughs> yeah exactly right. So it's like he and then and then and then <laughs> yeah. So he's got Morgan looking at him for doing it and not wanting to a, information. I don't know if he's uh, well. I mean, up to this point, Murphy's trying to put a squeeze on him. Is that uh, was did she threatened with an, with um, interference yet? Or I don't think so yet. No, not but, yet. But no, she's demand, later, demanding later, answers later. She just, right away, and it's just like, you know. Yeah, they've just looked at it, and she's like, tell me. answers from somebody that prays in magic. <laughs> you know, like, what kind of a hold do you figure you're going to hold on him? I know. As a cop. But she's like, well, you've got information. Just get it for me. And Harry trying to tell her. It's like, well, it's not that easy. And she's like, I don't understand. Why not? Just yeah. do it. And just do it. Yeah, yeah. But because of some of his restrictions. Bureaucratic yeah. bullshit. Murphy. Bureaucratic bullshit. But it's, yeah. But it's that's... twice over. I mean, there's uh, Murphy's bu- bu- um, bureaucratic bullshit because she figures she can just like maybe throw something at him and go like, OK, if you don't, then you're interfering with my investigation. But how can you do that when you don't actually, no one's going to believe Magic. Yeah, and that's part of Murphy's problem too with it. But in the beginning, yeah, yes. is that she's a little also rigid. She, she yeah, yeah, she she know, sort of knows about this, is sort of willing to take some on faith, but she again, she's not fully in the know. She doesn't really get. She's still a pretty newbie to the whole thing. So yeah, so she does sometimes make some unrealistic demands of Harry because she doesn't understand the limitations of magic in and of itself or Harry within. A system that yes. she doesn't know exists so anyways chapter seven that's that <laughs> yeah okay. a big thank you to our guest speaker jay we've really appreciated having you on the show this does conclude our episode for accountant with a gun you can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and machinellies.ca there we have links to our other podcasts social media and other fun tidbits Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling, and thank you for listening.